All right. Totally All right, we're getting we're started. Go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Victoria Skirbo from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. And hooray, we are here again for a high tea with our friend, Reverend Denise Roberge. Hi, Denise. Hello. It's nice to be here. Thank you. Um, how, how have you been? Well, uh, the energies have been fairly intense lately. Um, uh, I, if I had to give myself a score for the week, uh, I would say it was probably a different score every day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even know how to rate it. Uh, mostly really great. Um, overarchingly well. Um, but I did have a dip, a pretty deepy dip for about three or four days where I was flattened, exhausted burnt. I, I had, I, could, I wasn't even thinking straight. And I, I, I was a little nervous. I'm like, geez, I haven't had an episode like this in a long time. And, um, and well, it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't triggered by anything that I am aware of. And, right. uh, that being said, as an empath, something that happens in China can uh, fly by my way and I can, you know, transmute that through a, a little depression. Or <laughs> so yeah. there's a lot, you know, a lot going on in the world and, and I'm sure I pick up on stuff. I know I pick up on stuff. Well, I also think, uh, you know, I've had this discussion with a number of my clients and, and my students, and there's really been a, um, an uptick in physical, physical symptoms and exhaustion. Yes. Exhaustion. Like I'm, I'm finding the same thing with my peeps too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I think it's, uh, you know, and I, and I understand the whole empathic thing because most of my life, you know, you go along and everything's okay. And then one day you wake up and you're like, Oh, what's the matter? Yeah. And you're like sad and you're like mad or you're like, just, it's just like, where did this come from? Yes. You know, there's Probably. nothing right. There's nothing in your life necessarily, um, that, that triggers that. And then something would happen and I'd be like, Oh, that's what I was feeling you know, some yeah, tragedy, some of, some, of it, some of it is precognitive. And, uh, right. one thing that, um, I'm not, I'm not sure about this at all, but it, with the, the death of Prince Philip. Oh, did he just, I should know that died. he just died like this morning or last oh, night. Okay. And it's I brand, knew new, brand new news. I just right. heard it this morning and it's brand new. It just happened. Um, that's going to ripple through ripple. It's just going to ripple. I mean, with the stuff between the stuff that's going on with. Well, uh, I mean, we've been, and, we've been losing elders now, yeah, oh, yeah. like really important elders for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, it. I think it's a uh, transition. Now <laughs> uh, we become the elders, darling. <laughs> well, I know I already am. I know I'm <laughs> feeling older. I'll tell you that. I'm almost 65. <laughs> so I'm definitely a crone now. Yeah, definitely a crone. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, my but, my my lovely hair would beg to differ, though. It, what if you see? It looks lovely. Yes. Yeah, I got a little color in it again. Well, I, I like it. I like the transition. I think too much. Like if it's all too much all at once, you have to gradually. I think for your own sense of self. Um, I'm proud balance. of my grays. I like my grays. I yeah. the silver, as I call them. They're, 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 they're called like whiz, strands of wisdom. Amen to that. Strands of wisdom. Magic. It's like magic. That's why sometimes the gray hair doesn't do what the old hair used to do. Like how you right. know your old hair would just like sit there. Now the gray hair is like, <laughs> because it's like all your antennas are. <laughs> well, hair, hair is energy. And um, yes, there is, there is a, there is, I just read something last week about, um, hair being an extension of the crown and, and, and they are like antenna and they are picking up energy. That's hair, right. Hair strands are picking up energy. I, I remember reading. Even though people say hair is dead, that the only part that's alive is right at the oh, no. follicle. No, 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 no. But hair, hair has transmute, transmits energy anyway. And we see. Yeah. I, I read many, I read somewhere many years ago that native Americans keep their hair long because it's their psychic sense. It helps them to, you know, be psychically aware of their environment. When they cut it, they lose that. Right, and, and, and a lot of the Indians that, uh, the Native Americans um, that were put in these massive uh, uh, yes. Christian, Christian schools right. um, didn't know what to do with themselves. They, they 
they were lost because they didn't have their hair. They didn't have their songs. They didn't have their circles. They didn't have their families. Right. And it was a tremendous trauma. And, and we wonder why so many um, people of Native American descent have such social issues. You know, I mean, we traumatized the living daylights out of them generationally after generation. It didn't happen all at once. It was constant since pre revolution pre the times that when we were still under the queen you know um it was a it was a long drawn out genocide very long yes. genocide and and you know people say oh people ought to pick themselves up by their bootstraps they say the same thing about people that are of um, any people of color you know they what they're no different they have access to everything we have they're no different than us well they certainly soulfully there there's absolutely no difference humanity there's actually no i think they're i think soulfully they're they're much more soulful they could be i think they've had people. they've suffered more the more so, you suffer you know, the more soul we, you have we haven't been kind we had this we have not been kind we've been very imperialistic and and genocidal historically and still um you know so we have blocks of people in our nation that need our light need our love and um, need definitely people like AOC and you know others to rally and to say no more. And it's happening. It's happening. There's a big movement again. Right. Well, um, there was the um, the Secretary of the Interior that Biden put into office. That is a, the maybe. only the only non-immigrant <laughs> to ever hold the office because she's Native American. Amen. And so there is this, you know, I mean, uh, he talks about, uh, I don't know, what's the term he uses? Uh, finding the soul of America or right, right. reviving the soul of America or something. What, he uses a different word, but it is that energy. And, uh, you know, as a country, we're going through our Pluto return. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's as intense as it's been ever but we can see the healing that's happening and he's doing us a great service and i right. yeah, the most unlikely i i would have picked the most unlikely person to do it he, he's actually doing a bang up job you mentioned in one of your videos in within the past week um that um this the suffering that he's gone through has has taught him so much has enlivened his spirit has increased his compassion has given him this really and he's a he's a scorpio so he's a deep feeler anyway he's got a lot of scorpio and right. it's well, all... he's got a lot of feeling and it's coming out now all his trauma he had to read he had to release mask after mask after mask and here's his beautiful radiant heart including everybody and wanting everybody to love each other and even if he didn't mean it say he made this up and this wasn't really how he felt and he was just doing what he was told to do or saying what he was told to say to please this XYZ group or whatever. Even if it's not true, he's still doing it. You know? Well, it is, well I, I, I'm not gonna judge the man. I think what he, what he, all I can see is what I can see and what I can hear, or what I see and hear is someone who's trying to bring America, America together. I really feel that. Well, he's, he's yes. And, and I think even beyond that, he's connecting us with um, our, our, I mean, Scorpio is the sign associated with the soul. Mm -hmm. It's ruled by Pluto. And he has his Pluto in uh, Leo, of course, because of the time he was born. Mm -hmm. But his Pluto sits right on the north node of the United States. So, so a, as does Bernie Sanders. So like oh, that, whole, that whole generation is sort of bringing us to this place. Uh, and then, of course, they're going to they're going to pass just like, you know, we talked, oh, just like you talked about Prince Philip, right? Mm -hmm. The old ways are, are going and we're going to have to take up the, the, uh, the, the, so, so, so I'm feeling what you're saying is, it, I'm feeling what you're saying very deeply. And it's feeling like Biden's a trans, uh, a transitional, um, yeah, he's a bridge bridge to, he's a bridge to where, we're to the next to where we're going. He's, he's opening. Up. He's opening the door and all his Scorpio is in the 12th house. And in astrology, the 12th house is the house of the veil. Mm. So he's, it's like he's parting the veil mm. and allowing that energy, you know, things to pass out and things to come in 
from the spiritual realms. And I think that people who've had a lot of loss in their life, a lot of death, a lot of that are open to that because they're connected very closely to the people they still love. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's like, even with my, my mother, Angie, who's a hundred now, I'll go in there and she's having conversations with all her brothers and her sisters and this one and that one. And this guy came last night and she's telling me about all these people in the room. And I'm like, yeah, good for her. Yeah. She's having no, I know, but I, you know, you can feel them. You feel like sometimes you walk in the room, you're like, that's yeah, pretty, pretty this room is cool. <laughs> They're all having a party, you know, and I can't see them, but I know they're there and she can you see them. You think they're, they're reaching down to help yeah. them and come up? They are, they've been around. They've been around here for a long time. Yeah, they're 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 gathering. Mm -hmm. They're gathering for the great um, welcome welcome home party. Mm -hmm. That that's that's what it feels like to me. And she's um, she's transitioning in that way. She's getting she's spending more and more time in in that in that place. And and um, you can see her body is starting to. And I mean, she's pretty strong. She's it, it, constitutionally, she's mm -hmm. very strong, but. She can only, you know, you can only hang on for so long, mm -hmm. you know, right. so, uh, and she's like you, she has a, a South node in Taurus. So they, they don't like to let go of nothing. <laughs> North node in Scorpio. Well, that's so, a, that's been a, a so chances are Denise are going to live a long life. Oh, I, you know um, what? Ever since I was a kid, my first astrology reading when I was, well, my mother always did my astrology when I was young, like yeah. 12, 11, 12. But your first um, official. Like my first official with her teacher. Um, she told me all kinds of stuff. And I laugh now because she had a Texas accent. And she was this larger than life. She had black hair that was big. And she wore all this like glamorous makeup. And In Texas. And, yeah, oh, she was very Texas. Big very hair, you know, the whole thing. And she had this drawl. And she said to me, uh, um, one of the things that she said to me was, you know, all this women's lib stuff, well, you know, it's going to serve some, but it's going to hurt others. And it's going to hurt you because you know what? If you don't act like you need a man, you're not going to catch a man. You're not going to get a man. You got to you gotta tone that light down a little bit. And some of that independence you have is going to be real off putting to men and she was absolutely right in the fact that I had a lot of, it was right. She was yeah. right. But the way she said it was so 60s, you know what I'm saying? Right. So Texas. In the so 60s. Texas. Yeah. She wasn't um, putting me down. She was just going, hey, you know what? You're way too independent, way too think strong of a mind. And just if you want to win a man, you're going to have to tone that down. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I don't want to. <laughs> you know, it's funny. She says, if you want to catch a man, it's like catching a fish. After a while, they stink. <laughs> Right. <laughs> After a while, throw them back. Like, what's that smell? Oh, right. It's the man. Yeah. You know? 50 percent of women and men break up. They divorce. So, uh, yeah, that, no matter what I did, I was going to end up alone. I think um, it's an interesting topic being I've been single my whole life. I've had relationships here and there, um, but I've been uh, single for a really long time now. And um, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, I really don't. Sometimes, um, the, sometimes the physical contact is the hard part. Like, I, but you know, I miss that. I do miss. I miss hugging my family and my kids. And well, that's also COVID stuff. Well, that's COVID. Yeah, I, we but had. No, a, I would. I would like to have a companion who lived five, ten miles away, and we would do fun things now and then, and we would get together and hug and snuggle and all that once in a while, and. Yeah. And they, that my partner would live in, <laughs> in their place there. And I would live over here. And then when it was convenient, we would get together because I am so set in my ways being so single, being single for so long. Um, I'm not, I'm not really interested in, in, in compromising a whole hell of a lot. Mm -hmm. I would a little bit, I would for the right person. I would certainly compromise. Right. 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 I will never get married. And I've known that since I was a kid. I told my mother when I was a teenager, I won't get married. I think with rare exceptions, and there certainly are, there are blessed souls that were destined to live this whole incarnation together. And it's magical and beautiful, or it's sucky, but they're learning a lot or whatever. They were meant to be together. And it, that's how it was. But for me, 
it feels like a, it's always felt ever since I was a young teenager, like a trap. It's like a legal trap that you have to well, it is. jump through hoops to get out of it. It costs $10 to get married. I think a, a, a marriage license is $10. Yep. And the, the least that you can spend for a divorce is like 350. Right. So already we know. <laughs> well, and, and, and what the hell do you know when you're, when you're 20 or 25 or uh, 30, you barely know yourself. How do you know you, how do you, how can you choose a permanent? I'm 60, almost 65. And I, I can't, I just can't even dream. I just can't imagine. I can't imagine being legally bound to anyone for the rest of my life. It's, the only thing that concerns me is you just said the word never. And I find when you say never, the universe says, oh, really? Well, here you go. <laughs> well, you know, so I'm if, if, I am, if somebody I knocks am. on your door during this, uh, during this thing, we, we, I want to see who's on the other side of that door. The legal part is what I'm saying. Legally, but I do not want to be legally bound to anybody. I am, that I understand. I am yeah. open to um, a long-term relationship. Right, 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 right. If right. the right person flows in my life and it's easy and it, makes sense and you know it's just sweet and wonderful and lovely and all that um i don't have a uh i don't i never had never had that dream that we were taught that prince charming was going to ride in on a white horse and take us away and we were going to live in magical thrilling happiness till death do us part i um, i never had that delusion i never had delusion. <laughs> i never had the wedding fantasy of being in the white dress and being a princess for a day and all that. Never had all any of that. And, and my mother was always like, hey, do you ever think about your possible wedding? Would you, would you like kind of what? I'm like, I'm not going to get married. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny. I, I remember. never did. I had children and I was with, with one guy for a long time, but. Um, but never uh, the marriage thing. Everyone said, why aren't you guys married? I'm like, because it's gonna, it, it would just be a divorce. I'm saving money. It's, it would just be a divorce. I know it's not gonna so pragmatic. You're so pragmatic. Um, I, I, I remember thinking when I was um, at my wedding, um, cause I got married, I was like 39, I was like almost 40. And well, that's uh, a good age to get married because you know yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's, 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 I'm not, I don't regret getting married. I, 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 I think I work better in partnership anyway. Mm -hmm. I kind of need that ballast a little bit in my life. Uh, um, I sure could have used some in my life at times. Yeah. But um, I remember thinking I had the white dress on and my girlfriend's daughter, who's now a doctor, she's like an MD, but this was, you know, a couple of years ago, she looked up at me and she was like, you look so beautiful. And she had like her eyes. And I was like, Oh, this is that thing they talk about feeling like a princess for a day or a queen for a day. It's I never like I never like thought about it, but when it happened, it felt really good. I was like, ooh, I kind of <laughs> like this. But I got over myself pretty quick. Soon as that soon as that corset came off, man, I was back to you know jeans and uh, oh yeah, just jeans and you know like you know your your, your usual stuff. <laughs> yeah, you no. Know? So it was fun. It was a fun thing. I'm glad I did it. More than anything, um, the best thing about the wedding was that it was a real expression of um, my philosophies and who I'd become. And I wanted my family to witness that. You know, I we think got that's beautiful. And, you know, I'm a, I, here I am saying I never want to get married and I'm a wedding officiant. Um, right, right. <laughs> I, 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 want, I want to explain that that's not a contradiction for me because every individual has the right and the, and the, and the free will and the, and the glory really to create whatever kind of life you want to live. That's right. And I am not opposed to anybody else getting married. I think it's wonderful. If you want to get married, it's a beautiful thing it, or it's not a beautiful thing and you learn and you grow, whatever it's supposed, it is what it's supposed to be. And it be, helps you become who you're supposed to be. And I'm for it. I'm not against marriage as an institution. Well, it's just Only, that, it's just you it knew just for yourself be, it wasn't good, or at least it wasn't going to be the the classical <clears throat> marrying the man kind of you know living happily ever after that you know. Well, I had a couple of proposals, marriage proposals, um, when I was young in my in college and shortly after in my in my twenties, and I was like. You know, if you really want to get married and settle down, you really have to find somebody else because I, 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 I'm not ready. I don't see it. I don't feel it. I, 
I like you a lot. You know, I'd hang out with you for a long time. I think you're great, but um, I just couldn't do it. I, yeah. couldn't do it. I just never, I never could. And I know part of it's trauma related. Some well, it, you know, I, I mean, it's fine. I mean, uh, witness and marriage. It's not, yeah, it's not for everyone. Well, it's just a lot of people, most people do it, but it's not for everyone. Right. Um, and, you know, it's better to know, you know, what is, what does it say on the Oracle of Delphi? Know thyself. Right. You knew yourself. So I did. Yeah. So um, this is a fun conversation, but I, I pulled out some uh, of my, some cards here. I thought maybe I'd pull a few Oracle cards. Awesome. Um, these are the illuminated, illuminated earth Oracle. And I, and, I, and um, they're from uh, an artist in, uh, Named Claire uh, Mack, her name is Claire, C-L-A-R-E. Oh, that's that pretty deck. Yeah, yeah, this is the one that I said I was going to buy you and I haven't done it yet, but I will. Uh, my birthday was in December, just to, just to remind you. <laughs> I'll use a different deck. No, I'm only kidding. All right, so I'm going to pull the first card. Uh -huh. I got the, the wisdom card. Wisdom. Mm. So here we are sharing our wisdom. It almost looks like a little baby. Doesn't that look like a little baby head in like almost like a, um, a yeah. kind of like stroller or well, something? Well, I'm feeling the, um, the, the moth at the bottom. That's a moth, right? It looks like a moth to me. It looks like a wave. It looks like a whale tail to me. Whale tail? I don't know. This woman is from um, Seattle. So all her colors are so very Seattle to me. The whole thing feels like the, the like what happens from the heart to the to the uh, aura to the energy field to the soul. Yeah, it's like every it's like it's almost it's like, like it's coming up and out like that. Right. right? So and, you, uh, and and the connection to the stars and the moons. I mean, that's what the orange the orange things look like. Right. To me. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and that's all in green. And the purple is to me the 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 crown chakra. So it's like us receiving the the energy you were supposed to read this card that's okay <laughs> ah, i'm feeling a lot of uh a lot of birthing energy yes um, absolutely a lot of birthing energy a lot of birthing going on it's like we're birthing our wisdom yeah we're birthing our wisdom yeah. i'm going to read what she says about it but okay. you can continue to if you no, know no, you go ahead and read what she says i'd be curious okay I try to hold the card up and then read, but then I can't find the page. So give oh, me a second. Can you put the card down for a minute? No, I, I like it up. <laughs> I, like, I like the struggle, don't you know? Uh, yeah. Um, this, oh, yeah is, this illustrates pearl of age. Wisdom is a gift of accumulated knowledge and experiences, as well as the intrinsic knowing present the intrinsic knowing present in nature. Look to your elders and teachers for guidance. And attune to your wise mind, which holds tr the truth you seek. Nice. So this is, we've just been, we've been talking about this, right? We've been talking about the elders passing. We've been talking about Biden. We've been talking about your own understanding of yourself. So that's pretty aligned with what we're talking about. Okay. So the next card is connection. Mm. As above, so below, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Connecting heaven and earth. Yeah. These are so beautiful, aren't and, they? And uh, the up in the up in the up now. Remember, I have cataracts, but up up in, up in the uh, corner there. Yeah, that corner. Yeah. Um, that feels like a yin yang. Yeah. Know? And it's balancing with the this. Yeah, it feels like a yin yang to me for some reason. I know it, it's not officially a yin yang, but it. Well, it is what it is. Balance like, energy. It's got balance energy, and then it's got the the earth. What seems to be the earth. So balancing energy is coming in to help merge. Right, right. We're, 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 you know, we were talking about Biden having that, um, that 12th house Scorpio stellium mm -hmm. and, and that, that connecting this, this, th that side of the veil with this side of the veil feels very uh, apt. Yes. And then I have, we have air, the element of air. Mm. okay I'll, I'll bring a it'll get better i, I feel there. like i'm jumping into it it's it's a beautiful i feel like i can just jump into it energetically oh, yeah it's beautiful cards i freaking love these cards oh 
All right, I'm, um, I'm going to get online. To I'm going to get much, online and order them for you today. I want to. I want to talk about the 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 uh, the, the geometric with the, with the, those squares on on edge on there. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a cube. They it's were. Like yeah. Cube. Well, it feels like the um that the it feels very sacredly ge geometric to me, and it feels like this is a, a portal, and um it's it's like riding the thought waves through um through this portal in order to rise up and spending time in the portal in or and the portal would be your highest self or your connection to your soul or your divinity or whatever it is that you want to call it but go ahead read i want i want to hear the card oh okay so let me i'll read what she says um it's interesting this square that we see here for the longest time and we had one of these in the sky we had a grand we had a grand mutable square with the nodes of the moon. And whenever the nodes of the moon are, are active, it's a faded time. But the two, uh, the two sort of planets that were, uh, uh, besides the nodes that were associated with it, was Neptune, which is the planet of source energy itself, and Vesta. Vesta is what we, what we devote ourselves to, and what we focus our, ourselves on. And it That's was- the goddess of hearth and home, isn't it? Yes, yes. She's, she's, she, it's about, uh, it's it's about uh, devo devotion mm -hmm. because the Vestal Virgins had to keep the, the the flame of spirit alive, and and that was in Virgo, which is about physical healing and healing of the of the of the body and healing of the earth, and we had this giant. Now it's now it's dissipated. Now um, Vesta has, I think. Vesta might still be part of it, but Neptune has sort of uh, gone off on its own now. Um, so, but it's it's sort of the energy is still there, but it's not as potent. And it was it was almost like we were going through that doorway, like we, we were going through. And in that process, we lost a lot of people. A lot of the people who left, uh, I think, had come had previously decided that this this was going to be their exit point i think a lot oh, of the I people do too. I do too. Yeah, yeah i agree i agree this was uh, covid was a portal for um people to choose to leave who were ready who had completed their cycle but maybe were hanging on for or just 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 found it too hard to 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 be here and and said okay ne ne next next time i'll get i'll get around to it next time so connection that's this card here the one with the um mm -hmm. With, with that one, it says, um, there is a wonderfully satisfying feeling in connecting with another being, whether it is through a partnership, friendship, or collaboration within a community. Find places of intersection among like minded souls and meet them with, with authenticity. Notice how they mirror your passions. Oh, yeah. One of the things I'd like to say about that card, and, and, and it relates to uh, some of the feelings that I have about being on my own. Um, I say I'm single, but I don't feel single because I have two or three intimate, beautiful connections with, with uh, mostly women um, that are so affectionate and so deep and so there all the time through up and down and thick and thin. I have really a couple of really strong friends, you're one of them, that I just make it, it makes being single a whole lot easier when you have people sure. I need people i need i need a group and, and i don't have a big group i used to have hundreds of friends but this connection with with the deep connection with other souls on the planet while we're on the planet um is really important it's just so nobody you know it takes a village nobody can do it alone and anyone that thinks they can i i take them the hard road you know everyone needs help i encourage everybody no matter where they are when you're re reaching a bump in the road or a tra trauma or tragedy, you just ask for help because there's help out there. There's a connect interconnected web of helpers, and when you tune in and look, just look, you get it. You know, you get well, it. you know, I can I can feel that happening in my own practice. I know you can feel it happening in your practice. Um, you know, and just just you know, everybody's story matters, mm. and everybody's story has. A, has a little piece of wisdom, yeah. you know, for other people. Yeah. Um, 
so air, it says one of the, and I'll hold it up now that I found the page. <laughs> it says air, one of the four physical elements indicates action coupled with intellect, like a cool, crisp breeze cutting through a mountain pass. The mind is sharp, sharply attuning to well-laid plans. Use this time to clarify as momentum to initiate change or simply be present to existing conditions. Excuse me. I should have just not brought this phone down. <laughs> it's all scam. It's all spam. No one ever. I know. That's why I got rid of never, it's line. never anything important. I mean, like occasionally I'll see a name and I'll go, oh, I think that's somebody I have to answer. Or I figured they'll just leave a message. So if anybody calls me and I don't answer the phone, just leave the message. I'll get back to you. Otherwise, I'm trying to avoid spam. So those were the three cards that I picked in that deck. Lovely. So uh, I want that deck. If you don't buy it for me, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> I'm going to order it right. Well, not right now, but as soon as I get over. <laughs> God forbid I try to do something else while I'm on Zuba. Oh, don't do two things at once. We'll, <laughs> we'll get sent to China or something. I don't know. Something will happen. Um, so that was fun. That was that fun. was. It was beautiful. That was great. That was that was. So uh, you you have some yeah. you have some cool cards, right? Like you pick yeah. them and I'll read them. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> That's fine with me. Whoever's I'll, supposed to read them can read them. It's all I'll good. Have, I'll put two cents if I have two cents in my pocket. I'll put it in. Oh, you'll How about that. Well, this deck is um, inspired by the Course in Miracles. And I've been using it a lot because it's been for myself and on um, lives and, you know, different groups. That I'm yeah, in. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, you do, before you, before you go, you do lives on you on uh, Facebook, don't you? Yes, pretty regularly. Let, let the people know when you do that. Oh, how would I let your people? No, I mean, let us know, like, when do you, it does, is it, oh. do you do them like every Thursday or? Oh, um, I don't, um, my marketing, my business, um, advisor is telling just yesterday informed me you're doing a live every day and you're doing a post every day on facebook okay wow. good. good well this is going to count as my live i don't have time to do a live on facebook. <laughs> so i want to do a youtube doing a youtube video today instead but anyway um well you can put this up on your thing yeah and it's on my, my facebook page is my is uh denise emerald burge i don't think i was able to get the reverend in there for some reason um so you so can still, friend her, you friend her, and you'll get friend, to her friend me. I still have a little room for friends. I I I still have uh, a couple thousand openings. <laughs> I think you can have five thousand friends. Yeah, you can. And I still have way under that. So I have a lot of friends, but so you can get in, friend me, and that'd be fine. And you can scroll down my page. I have a bunch of lives on my page that you can watch. And the one I did yesterday, I got this new equipment, and and it take some like finagling with the settings and stuff the headset because as i know i don't know if you can hear it but there's a hum in my computer and it's some people find it distracting and yesterday i did a pretty silent one <laughs> you barely hear me because i wasn't didn't do it right me in tech you know takes me uh, here well you know it takes a while. and i didn't even bother with it today i'm like ah, i'm not fussing with the test settings again <laughs> um, i can hear you just fine so yeah oh good okay all right so this deck for those of you who don't know A Course in Miracles, um, it is sort of an updated message in, in a huge book with tiny, tiny writing on very thin pages. I have it somewhere. I, don't, I can show it to you. An amazing tome uh, channeled by Jesus through a Jewish atheist psychiatrist. Um, very surprisingly to her, she start, she would just go boom and go into, into channel and her, and her partner would be like, who the hell is she, ta she talking to and come in and hear all this. Jesus. Like, <laughs> who the hell is all this stuff? You're right. Um, so he became her scribe, um, and transcribed uh, all of her channels and it became the book, of course, miracles. And this is sort of Jesus's new messages. Uh, they certainly correspond with his old messages. Isn't they're not but they're more expanded. Right. Um, so um, I wouldn't necessarily call this a Christian deck because I don't know how many Christians believe in channeling, but um, boy, it's beautiful. It's very positive, very uplifting and very spiritual. Just know that some of the, most of the language is somewhat biblical, um, but 
you can ignore that because it's also metaphysical. You know, there's no, you can't really make those separations when it comes to dealing with spirit. So, all right, I'm going to pick, I'll just start with one because this, this, some of them are very needy. We only need one. Come out, come out. Come out, come out wherever you right, are. I got two. Um, Remember um, that? Come, come, out, out, come out, come out wherever you are. Wherever you are, yep. Oh, yeah. But in my neighborhood, um, there were some kids from Boston. Is this maybe there's only one time. There were some kids from Boston that lived across the street. And I guess in Boston, uh, when they were growing up, if you wanted your friend to come outside and play, you didn't knock on the door, you yelled their name, you went, hi oh Denise, or hi oh <laughs> This was a Boston thing, I guess. I don't know. We, I lived, was... we lived just like 35 miles away from Boston. So um, yeah, we used to, we were, my brother's friends would be, oh, oh geez, it was obnoxious. But anyway, I place the future in the hands of God. That's the front of the, the card. Oh man. There's so much to say even just about that, but there's a, another message on the back. A healed mind does not plan. It carries out the plans that it receives yeah. through listening to wisdom that is not its own. That's right. Now, the, I would just like to say that I, whether you're a Christian or not, you have, you probably, if you're listening to this video, you probably believe in some power greater than yourself, greater than the earth, greater than humanity. And you might have a different name for God. You might have, you might even call it infinite energy or the, the field of infinite possibilities. You might even be like, do a, a physics version. Um, they're all true. Um, the I like field. I, I, the field. I like to use the word spirit or source myself a lot um but god is fine for me too it's very familiar i grew up with that so i place the future in the hands of god what this reminds me of and what this is feeling like is when i'm in my head planning and scheming and figuring out and trying to solve a problem from here not from my third eye i'm, I'm not referring to my third eye i'm re referring to my brain thinking things through, analyzing, evaluating, judging. Um, what's happening is that I'm kind of closing my crown chakra. If I'm spending too much time in my human brain, I'm closing down my, my, my crown chakra and I'm less able to receive the wisdom that's flowing to me all the time from that which is called God or source or spirit. So there's always wisdom flowing to me. And when I slow down and quiet down and live a little bit of a calmer life and take really good care of myself, I'm more and more and more able to receive the messaging and to receive the guidance and to receive the next right step. I don't have to have the whole plan in place. I can just know all I need is the next step to accomplish anything I need to accomplish. All I need is the next step and it helps stay mindful and, uh, keep uh, you know keeps me mindful and it keeps me remembering that you know everything that i do is one step at a time and anyone that believes in multitasking good for you uh, i don't um and when i try i don't get anything done well um i really can't effectively do much more than one thing at a time so this says a healed mind does not plan that doesn't mean you can't have dreams or goals or um like a loose trajectory of events. I mean, that's great. Have a loose plan, have a, have a, you know, even dream out specific daydream, some of the specifics if you want, but let go of the outcome and let go of feeling like you have to control every single thing along the way, because when you do that, you're closing down the wisdom. So the wisdom comes from receiving and listening and it comes from our highest self or our, the part of us that is soul, the part of us that is connected to the, to the light yeah. and the wisdom. Yeah, our higher spiritual universe. self. So uh, spiritual I think self. this is a message for, I'm gonna put the card down because the message is for all of the people who are sitting and evaluating and figuring out and planning. And um, I'm, I'm gonna suggest and- Yeah, like what's my next step? I'll ask for your next step. 
That's right. Ask for your next illuminated step. I do that every morning. Show me my next illuminated step because that's all you need because you take that step and then you'll get more direction. Then you'll go over here and you'll get more direction. And when you're not too busy planning, the plan unfolds. It just goes through the path of least resistance. So this brain is really, really awesome. The human brain is awesome at some things and it's a wonderful tool and God bless it. It's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. There are some things like, you know, doing your taxes and uh, paying your bills and fixing your car and a whole bunch of things that are, the brain is really great at. Let the brain do what it's really great at and let Soros do the other stuff, do the creative stuff, you know, and well, the healing stuff, the healing well, stuff. One of my teachers, John Martini, who's actually in The Secret, would say that the brain is actually a, a tuner. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, it, it, it actually, uh, and through meditation, you expand your bandwidth. Yes. Um, and what you're doing is you're just picking up signals from spirit. We're, we are not, this physical self, this ego, this personality is not in charge. We are tools for the greater whole and for spirit. And when we, that's why oftentimes we have these big dreams. They don't happen. We like, oh, and then we, we get all, and then spirit. Well, when we're married to outcome, we're always disappointed. Right. Then spirit comes in and says, okay, now that you we've gotten that out of the way. Here's where you're really going to go. This is, this is what you're doing. And I had, a, I had that spiritual awakening myself in a very, very sort of painful and, 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 and awful, you know, it was just, I was at, I just, I said, just, I said to spirit, I just can't hold this together anymore. And really what it was teaching me was just let go and let God, let, let go, let God got us, let go, let God got us all that is let, let yourself free yourself from these shoulda, coulda, wouldas. Oh, amen, I amen. This. How come I did this? Why didn't I know better? All of this judgment and just erase it and accept what spirit has to offer you. And the miraculous shift in me and my life, and my life didn't get easier, but it, I got into a flow. And let me tell you, when you get into that flow, it's much better than trying to constantly like, uh, you know, constantly uh, steer against all this, like, you know, you like it, you know, like when you're in the boat and you go over the waves, like, boom, boom. It's like, just let, just let the, we'll let the flow. That's called um, Esther, um, uh, um, Abraham through Esther Hicks calls that the path of least resistance. Yes. Letting things flow, letting things come. Let it flow. flow. And, let, and it flow. let it let flow. Let it flow. I changed the words to that, by the way. It's let she, it yeah, go. She, I I, it. I'm a big fan of Abraham. I'm also a big fan of the stream of David. I follow several different channeling people, people that channel. Lee Harris, you mentioned him. <gasps> Did you yeah. hear Lee Harris? I, I, I log the day one that. of a new month every month. Just get, I every, He's one of the few people I will never miss. And there oh. are a couple I won't miss. He's one. I don't, I don't miss him either. He is uh, so connected. And he says the same things that I find that I say at the same time, the only difference is I use astrological and Kabbalistic language. Sure. And he just says, disease said this, yep. which maybe I should say, the cues say, no, I better not say the cues. Well, you, I, you, I think you probably work best in a, in a combination world of, of self yes. structure. Yeah. Intuition and, and um, I need that. that. I need that. From the yeah, that's how you operate. That's how you bring in uh, wisdom. So there's nothing wrong with that. I love I, it. I love it. I just, I, know. I lose, I lose sometimes I lose people though. They're like, whoop, they fall off the, they fall off the, uh, the detail train. They're like, oh, she's going into those deep. That's when Michael, like I say to Michael, Michael, you should, he, he'll like say something to me. And I'm like, yeah, I said that today. You should really listen to my stuff. And he goes, when you start talking astrology, I, he just glazes over and he goes, I, um, although I, he doesn't really have to listen to me because he has his own connections. So sure. Don't, but, well, uh, don't we all, don't we yeah, all? Yeah. Yeah. And every now and again, he'll ask me an astrology question. I'm like, Ooh, I get excited. Ooh, he's asking me an astrology. <laughs> I love us. I love the general, uh, I love, I love astrology, but I'm not, uh, um, I'm not tuned into all the details. Right. Well, but you're an energetic astrologer. 
I'm a what? You, you, you're an energetic astrologer. I know. I yeah, tell I you stuff. I say, oh, this this is the energy for today. And you go, that's what happened to me yesterday. And I'm like, yeah, well, you're, you're, a, you're a day ahead. Well, not only that, but I have a, I have an intuitive feeling about the signs. If someone says to me, oh, my Mars is in, uh, my Mars is in Aries, which is me. And my son is in, in Leo. I'm going to get all like loads of vibes just off that. You right. know, I get loads of vibes. I'm, I'm highly intuitive when, when I know a little, just a little bit about people's charts. In fact, they, before I did readings, I used to always ask people, do you know your sun sign? Do you know your moon sign? Because I just get all kinds of vibes from it. Yeah, because I know a little bit about that. I've been, I grew up with an astrologer. I know. Um, so I'm going to do this one last card and then we can go where we need to go. Um, truth will correct all errors in my mind. Mm. When a situation has been dedicated wholly to truth, peace is inevitable. Hmm. This is about thought course correction. Like when we're in, um, I'll give you, give you some examples. Like when we're really focused on what other people are doing, when we're really focused on any given emotion in the moment, when we're like obsessively focused on one given emotion or one given thought or the behavior of someone else. When we're, when we're other directed pretty much and not in our center, um, we're not in our truth. So we can get thrown out of our truth by outside circumstances that can happen. I, it happens yeah. all the time. I think a lot of people uh, came to understand that through the Trump administration. Isn't that the truth? So once we get rebalanced and talk our way through, through the crazy thoughts, um, the untrue thoughts, or the obsessive thoughts, or the thoughts that are leading us down a path of resistance, um, healing happens. We get when our thought switches gears and we flip back into our center, the errors go away and the truth replaces them. Um, and when we're in our truth, that's peace. Yeah. Even if the truth isn't always pretty, it's still peaceful and it's calming to know what it is we have to deal with what we have to face. So that's right. That's all I wanted to say about that for now. Okay. So uh, we've been around the block on some interesting. Uh, yeah, this was fun. This you're almost. Fun. You're almost. Um, you're, you're you're a little bit behind, you're a little bit younger than me, but you're you're just about a crone now too. You're getting. Pretty <laughs> I know. I know your wise age no, just just give me a couple more years and then i'll i will i will embrace Break the crone yeah mm -hmm. um so we've been on i think maybe maybe about an hour i'm not sure but uh, a little less I, but that's okay yeah i do um, have i do have some i have some stuff some stuff on the physical plane that needs to get done so do I. I i have a hole i have to dig well i don't actually have to dig it but it's mm -hmm. dug already i just have to make it a little bit bigger yeah or um, wait or wait for somebody to come and do it for me but i, I would just like to tell people uh give an update quickly um my website is in its absolute final edits it's it's all it's it's on in the ether now it's it's in existence in, in cyberspace um but there are a bunch of linkages and um links that need to be connected and and this is one mind spiritual guidance correct Ser services it used to be one mind spiritual services.com yeah but if you go there now you're going to find one page that's down you're going to find some links that don't bring you where they need to go where you really need to go it's not quite ready to be fully serviceable but it's damn close it's within a, a day or two it's probably oh okay well it's probably you know it's so Check fun to out. look at. You can look at it and see what's on there, uh, and it's it's absolutely gorgeous, and I'm really happy with it. And, I'm, I'm gonna uh, get. I'm gonna after I um, order your cards and dig my hole. <laughs> I'm gonna go on and dig a look. <laughs> okay. So I'm I, I'm I'm uh, I've got mentoring programs. Uh, one's called strategic mentoring, and one's called advanced mentoring. Um, the advanced mentoring is for people that are already in practice, already practice practicing something, but maybe they're kind of new, or maybe they're not firmly established, or maybe they want to enhance their entrepreneurial skills or whatever. Uh, that's very flexible and very open to whatever people need. And strategic mentoring is more for people that are on a spiritual path who um, would really like 
some guidance because they have some blocks or because they have some difficult relationships or they have some uh, habits or issues that just not go away on their and own. You, and you also sort of, you train people how to access it for themselves as well. Oh, ab absolutely. Right? I mean, like it's, it's not goal, just, it's, my it's not just selling them fish, it's no. teaching them how to fish. No, 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 no. One of the biggest things I work on is teaching people how to go within and find their own answers. A lot of times they, I give homework, I don't give people solutions. I give them formulas and okay. ideas and seed, seed, seedlings. Hey, it's, it's been, it, it's, it's, a lot of that is from your own personal experience. You had to work it. Mm -hmm. So if you want it to work, they have to work it too. There's no, you know, I, sometimes I'll get people who want their answers. Like, is this a good thing to do? Is that a good thing to do? I don't like to tell people what to do no which is kind of interesting because you know as doctor i'm a doctor and i you know tell people but i tell people what i give them suggestions and it's up to them to do it i ain't going to force them right i just write down that i told them so that in case they come back to me so you never said that i have it written down but other than <laughs> that uh you know i i don't like no, i'm a partner I, I, i'm a partner and a, and a and a and a mentor and that's kind of what you are too that is what you are you're it's like we're for some period of time we're joining hands and we're walking the path together yeah. to inspire each other and to um figure out what the next best step is and how to hear it and how to find it and how to implement it um and it's it's fun so i, I also have a program for i just have a brand new program i don't even have a single client in it yet um, for women in sobriety, um, women oh. with length of time in sobriety who want to go with, to the spiritual next level. Um, and that's really cool. And of course, I've got my readings up there and Reiki and um, all that kind of stuff. So awesome. all the stuff I've always been doing. Thank you for letting me um, plug myself a little bit. Oh, good. Well, people want to know. You know, acquiring minds, acquiring minds. <laughs> All right, sweetie. Well, it's been uh, as always. It's amazing. Every time we do this, it's different. Every time, it's amazing. Yes. I never, and I like the whole idea of coming in. Well, I don't know if I'd call it lines, but certainly oh, we had absolutely no. Plan. How about this? It's not blind. It's agendaless. We don't have agendas. Yes. Right. That's and right. so we let we let get out of the way. And we let spirit come in and inform us about what we're going to talk about. But That's as right. always, my dear, I love speaking to you. I, I can't you. wait until we can hug each other again. Me too. I'm looking and, uh, <laughs> I will see you. Uh, I will see you shortly. I'm sure. Oh, all so right. We'll get together very soon now that the weather's nice and the garden's coming in. I think. Oh, it is. It's looking pretty. Yeah. All right, honey, I'm much love, Denise. And for all of you out there, thank you for sitting with us for this hour or so. It's always a pleasure to share our experiences and uh, dare I say our wisdom or, you know, at least what we've experienced, which I guess is all of our wisdoms, right? What we experience and how we, we navigate the sometimes treacherous waters of life. Sometimes. Thank all right, mom. honey. Bye everyone. Namaste. Bye. Much love.